Hey everyone and welcome. Here we are back at Grace to Gratitude and believe it or not, we are on day 23. And it's been the most remarkable journey for me and I'm certain it has for you as well. I have a wonderful guest with me today and a very dear friend, Cindy Sansom Braff. And she is here to share with you a personal story, maybe even two. We'll see how <clears throat> our time runs for us, but Cindy has been um, in such a deep connection to spirit for such a long time. And I know that she has probably a vault full of these stories, but something that has come to me through really um, creating this platform for people to share. And that is that the more that we are really in tune with what this field of grace is, we start to realize that it is at work 24 seven. And I know that sometimes it seems like the world is upside down, right? Topsy turvy and, and grace is nowhere to be found, but it is. And so what you're going to hear today is just yet another example but a very special example of how grace leads us to this place where our heart just bursts open and we cannot do anything but feel grateful. And so without further ado, I give you my dear, wonderful friend, Cindy. Thank you, Cindy, for being here. Oh, I'm grateful to be here. <laughs> this is something I think I needed today because we're getting all hectic. Uh, with the holidays coming and feeling a little sad because maybe it's not going to be the holidays we really would want, you know, gathering with bigger families or, you know, with our friends. And so maybe we're thinking of what we don't have and we have to kind of focus on what we still do have here this year and not take for granted just spending time with one or two people if that's all, you know, we can do this year. So I think this is an excellent, excellent topic for today and for this month. Well, I'm thrilled to have you here. Um, I agree with you. And it was something um, that I've said previously that I just had this realization exactly as you were describing. With everything that's going on, we may have difficulty reaching gratitude, just plucking it out, or it'll just be some sort of a remote uh, response without actually feeling it. And the advantage that we have to the energy of gratitude is that our systems, all of our systems have been calibrated to be ignited and to come back into alignment through that energy. And so if we're not touching it, if we're not feeling it, we have to find a way to do that. And that's what I believe that grace does. It gives us that opportunity. I look at grace as kind of like this bridge, right? It's a bridge energy. It takes us from where we are to where we want to be. And it's like a river that just flows. So Cindy, will you share with us your experiences with grace to gratitude and how it has affected your life? Oh, exactly. Um, I remember in the beginning of my spiritual journey and a spiritual journey sometimes can correspond with our midlife crisis. So I was about 41. <laughs> and, um, a spiritual crisis is kind of, and a midlife crisis are the same thing. Yeah. And I was still doing the children's entertainment because I was a children's entertainer as well as professional ballet dancer. So I was doing, you know, hundreds and hundreds of shows a year and kind of exhausted to always have to be on all the time. No matter what was happening in my life, I had to smile, I had to look good, I had to you know, bring the audience up. And I was having a particularly hard time with feeling, had I fallen short of my calling? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? You know, a midlife crisis is you've done everything right and yet you're not happy. Yes. And so it was Christmas time and I was really feeling depressed and not very Christmassy. And I had to be a clown at a party for a group of Down syndrome um, mm. adults and children. 
And I am like not looking forward to being a singing, dancing clown, you know, and I'm not in the Christmas mood, but of course the show has to go on and entertainers are pretty good at turning on when they have to. So I go into this party and it's like hundreds of people there. And all of these Down syndrome adults have these little Christmas pins on and elf hats and costumes on. And they're so excited. They're like, it's Christmas, aren't you happy? And, you know, I'm thinking, no, I'm like Scrooge here, but of course I'm smiling and laughing. But by the time I finish two hours of these, with this joyful, so happy, not taking for granted, this is Christmas. Every little thing made them happy. If they gave them a candy cane, they were smiling. When they got these little gifts that were maybe from the dollar store, you know, an eraser, I don't know, a pencil. They were like, a pencil, you know, and, and then they started drawing and they were so happy. And by the time I left there, I was in a state of gratitude and joy. Grace had saved me, had put me where I needed to be. Like, here I am wondering, do I feel fall short of my calling? Am I smart enough? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? And here's these people just grateful to be, just grateful for who they are, not on that treadmill of I have to be smarter or better, <laughs> or, you know, get a better car. They were happy for that little dollar store pencil. And I began to realize my thinking, something was severely wrong with my thinking. And that reset my whole attitude for the year that followed and for the years that followed. Wow. Wow. So the whole like domino effect of that shifted your entire vibrational frequency. Exactly. exactly. And um, again, wow. the teacher is there when we're ready to see it. Okay. And I'm a firm believer in what Carl Jung, the famous psychologist, psychiatrist believe. If you could at all not sign yourself into a mental hospital, I mean, if you're going to harm yourself or others, of course, then you have to go. But if yeah. it's at all possible for you to do your outpatient or do your own therapy, whatever it is, self-help books, and go about your life. Don't lay down in bed and don't get up. Go to work. Do what's on your plate because those are called waking dreams. So if I had decided I'm too depressed to go to work that day, maybe gave the show to someone else. Um, I would have missed that waking dream that I was meant to have. Mm -hmm. So the sadder we are, the more we're in a bad place, the more we need to be a soldier, get dressed, get up, do. And again, depression is something that can be, you know, so fatiguing. You don't want to get out of bed. And I was depressed. I was pretty much probably clinically depressed but without knowing it. And mm -hmm. yet, you know, the show had to go on. I'm an old soul. We don't, you know, lay down and die. We just get up and go, but it has helped me throughout my life. And those moments when I really didn't want to get dressed and go to work, when I really didn't want to clean the house or do what needed to be doing, just getting up and doing what was on my plate that day always gave me these little waking dreams. So if you're feeling sad or not grateful, you have the Corona blues right now, which people have, they have the Corona blues for sure. You know, then let's not think of all the things we can't do today and yeah. all the things we can't, we can't go here and we can't do this and we can't do that. How about, well, we can still go for a walk. We can still work out in our homes. We can still do so many things. So let's look at the things we can do and not focus on what we can't do because some of the things that the universe has taken away from us are our distractions. Yeah. People are too busy distracting, running here, running there, going everywhere without thinking. Now, if you're gonna go run to the store, you gotta think, is it worth maybe risking my life if I can get Corona or can I do without that? Okay, it's kind of saying, do I really need to go to a bar? Okay, do I really need to go gambling in a casino? Do I really need to do all these distractions? Or can I simply sit and be and do something different and learn something different? So God is resetting our, our world through this. So let's see, can we learn something different? Can we be in gratitude? These are all lessons. You know, I think there's very big lessons in, in Corona and some of them are just patience, mm -hmm. fortitude, yeah. endurance, faith, you know, that we will get through this. It isn't whining and complaining because the negativity is the opposite of gratitude. Gratitude is just not taking anything for granted. 
just the fact that I had a, you know, a delicious oatmeal for breakfast that, you know, really in my tummy feels warm and great. Those are things that we have to start being a little more in gratitude for the little things yeah. and not, not all the big things that we have, just the little things that we take for granted. You know, it's being warm in my house on a rainy day. That's something that a lot of people take for granted, but not everybody has a warm house. Not everybody has breakfast. Not everybody has these things that so many of us take for granted. So in your own gratitude, remember, you know, the universe doesn't owe us anything. Okay. Everything we have is something that should not be taken for granted. And I think we've gotten to that mindset of let's take it for granted. Let's want more. Let's keep consuming more, getting more. You know, you get a car. It's not a good enough car. You know, someone always has a better car. Well, I want the better car. And we keep getting on this need to have more and more and more and more. And I think it gets ridiculous after a while. So just be grateful for the things that you have. And if there are things that you don't have, well, why don't you have them? Maybe you can work harder. Maybe you can learn a new skill. If you're in a state of envy of someone, well, maybe you envy them because you think you can do that. Well, then learn how to do it. So anything that we're feeling negatively, let's try to see how can I make my life more positive. And again, just shifting your energies, being in the now, wherever you are, makes a difference. Yeah. A couple of things that you brought up that I'd like to shed a little um, light on. And that is, you know, first off, I think you're right. I think that we do tend to just take for granted oh, yeah. some things and not realize that they really are the very thing that we can direct our gratitude towards. You know, um, it can be as simple as having the toothbrush, right? To brush your teeth this morning. <laughs> We have to start somewhere. But what I also want to go back to is this state of grace that created the opportunity for you to be elevated in your vibrational frequency when you were working with that group of, of Downs um, community, right? And the grace that kept you going that morning, like you said, yeah, you were depressed. You didn't feel like getting up. You, you just, you know, would have rather had stayed home and probably stayed in bed and with the covers over your head, but there was something that compelled you. You weren't aware of the grace at that time, no. but you were aware that your job was to keep going, was to get to the other side of it only by crossing over some threshold, even though you didn't know where it was or what it would be. And then you were, for lack of a better term, like rewarded by being engulfed in this energy of sheer joy, no strings attached, no prerequisites, just sheer joy. And so it became now a place for you to continually raise your vibrational frequency to meet it. And once you did, like you said, it shifted you for years. But what it also did is now it provided for you this new benchmark. You had experienced it. You had, you had become aware of this energy that had this potential to take you into a completely different realm, right? A different energy field where now you could raise yourself out of your depression, raise yourself out of whatever it was you were grieving because grief is always somehow connected to that. And what a beautiful thing when we realize that all of these orchestrations of the universe are there for us, but we have to say yes to it. You said yes that day in a big way because it seemed counterintuitive, but you did it because innately there was a voice that said, follow me. Follow me. <laughs> and even though you maybe didn't consciously know that, 
you were following it. Exactly. And then almost a month later, um, on Christmas Eve, I had to do a Mrs. Claus party. And my spirit was a, was a little bit better. You know, mm-hmm. it was a full solid month of trying to be in gr- gratitude. But I was still not, you know, out of that depression. And I was having trouble sleeping the night before this party. And I just said, dear God, can I just go to sleep? I can't have my mind racing. I have to work. I have to do a lot of shows. I have eight shows to do the next day. I oh my need Lord. to sleep. Okay. And all of a sudden I fell deeply into sleep and got a really good night's sleep. Mm. And then I'm doing Mrs. Claus and there's another Down syndrome person at this party and he's dressed as an elf. Okay. And he came up to me and said, Mrs. Claus, I know you had trouble sleeping last night. And this party was in a church, mind you. Mm. And he said, and Jesus and I put you to sleep and gave you a very good night's sleep. Did you sleep well, Mrs. Claus? And I looked at him and I said, oh, yes, I slept very well. And he said, good. And he walked away. And after I finished that party, I went over to some of the people that are regular parishioners of that church and said, "Um, who is that elf? And they said, oh, he delivers messages from Jesus when you need one. And did you get one? And I said, absolutely. And then he came up to me and said, I know you're not proud of what you do for a living. And I went, excuse me? And he said, but Jesus said, where was he most in the New Testament? And I said, I don't know. He said, at parties. And then he laughed. And he said, and then he said, he did a first miracle, look it up. And he left. And later I looked it up. And the first miracle that Jesus did was water to wine at a party. (laughs) And Jesus loved to go to parties and be among the children and sing and dance. And so I began to look at my work as being one of the last rituals that are left, birthday parties, (sighs) christenings, and baby namings. All of these are rituals that gather people together to celebrate. And what had I done with my life? I had brought joy to people. I had lifted them. And then about a week later, I I did a little mermaid party. And um, this girl who was now kind of grown up, but it was her cousin's party said, do you remember doing Cinderella for me when I was a little girl? And I really didn't remember her, but she said, but I remember you. And she said, whenever I'm sad, I look at that five-year-old birthday party where you were Cinderella and you made me laugh and smile and that makes me happy. So here was something that God was showing me, all the people I made happy, all the lives that I touched, that I thought what I was doing was silly or stupid or not important. And it made me, for the last few years of doing that particular job, for me to see it was a worthy profession and it was something that wasn't falling short of my calling. So whatever you're doing now for a living, maybe you think waiting on tables and believe me, I did that for years when I got out of college, there were no jobs. But with that job, I also tried to do in gratitude. I felt like, well, people go out to dinner. It's maybe the only time a couple's had to be together, you know? And I tried to make that our dinner as pleasant and happy as it could be. I tried to make them feel welcome in the restaurant and happy. So whatever job you're doing, if you're a salesperson, if it's something you're not wanting to do, try to do it with gratitude and joy because maybe that person that came into that store is sad today. Maybe your smile is gonna lift them. So we can be healers and helpers, no matter what our job is, no matter where we think we should be, we are where we are now. And so we have to do what we're doing now with gratitude and with thankfulness for the money, for what it provides for our family, for the food it puts on our table. And so I know a lot of people have lost their jobs or are not in the job they wanna do or doing it a way they don't wanna do. They don't wanna teach online. They don't wanna be on Zoom all day. Well, let's be gratitude that for this technology, we're able to still work during all of this. So let's not look at, well, I hate doing online. I hate doing the Zoom. No, God has lifted us technology-wise so that now, Some mothers can stay home and work and stay with their children. They don't always have to commute. People can work from the home. In many ways, lifting technology is probably the greatest gift that this pandemic has done. And so let's all look at everything as a positive thing. Let's look at the blessings in it. 
and start wherever you are to be in gratitude. Don't wait. Well, I'll be in gratitude when I get the big house that I want, or I'll be in gratitude when I get the love that I want. I'll be in gratitude when I get pregnant. Let's just be grateful for what we have today and not be grateful a year from now because humans are funny. When we get what we think we want, then we want something else. So we're never really in gratitude unless we're in gratitude for what do we have today. That's right. And gratitude is very much a now energy. In Absolutely. order to tune into it, it has to be now. Um, because it's part of the whole creative process, isn't it? Just what Absolutely. you described. Absolutely. Yeah. So what our audience um, may not remember from other conversations with Cindy is that Cindy is an award-winning playwright. <laughs> um, and she's also a psychic and a medium and has her own radio show and has so, I mean, just a plethora of, <laughs> of communication that takes place um, from spirit through her in her books, um, uh, Grant Me a Higher Love. I know that for myself, it, it you know, just was um, just, you know, so eye-changing, right? Everything changed when I read that book. And how much you have influenced our world and worlds beyond with the love and the light that you bring. And I do have to ask a question because you are in communication with spirit um, so much. Does spirit talk about things like gratitude? Always, um, it, when, especially if you're not in that state, all of a sudden you'll hear a voice saying, you know, you should be grateful for that. Or, you know, you're taking that for granted or what makes you think that's gonna be there forever? Like enjoy now. Mostly spirit tends to tell me to relax. I think I'm a really uptight person. I have to tell you, I'm a really uptight person. Most people may not see that with me, but what goes into my head is like always, you know, are you accomplishing enough? Are you doing enough? You know, is it done properly? Is it, did? and all of that is, you know, and the universe is always telling me, Cindy, relax. Like, would you just relax? It's good enough. You, it, you did good. It's okay. Yeah. You know, and so spirit is kind of funny. And years ago when I was going to do a show and one day and I was going to be late because, you know, the Long Island Expressway, which I call the Long Island Distressway, was backed <laughs> up. And there was no way I'm going to be on time for this party. And with kids parties, if you come an hour late, you might as well come a different day. I feel like sure. an hour and a half, two hours long. So I'm totally freaking out of my mind about something I can't control. Yeah. And spirit said to me, Cindy, you have two choices. You can sit here and relax because you're going to be the same 45 minutes late and listen to your music, or you can stroke out here. It's really your choice. Yeah. Okay? Relax or stroke out. And I wasn't still getting the message until this huge boat pulled in front of me with the name relax across the back of it. The boat oh my God. Running. And so for 45 minutes, I saw it relax across the <laughs> So spirit gave me my message loud and clear. And I was pretty relaxed by the time I went into the party. I'm th thinking, well, they're not going to pay me and they're going to yell at me and they're going to call up, you know, the people that I, I was doing this show for and they're going to complain. But instead, the woman said, oh, perfect timing. We were running so far behind. Welcome. Oh and I God. thought, look at that. And this was yeah. before cell phone. So I couldn't call or tell them I'm running late. Sure. Nothing. So it was almost my energy almost altered that. If I came in Absolutely. uptight, and who knows what, maybe she would have been an empath, felt my uptightness and responded differently. Yeah. So remember, sometimes it's just relax. You know, you're where you're supposed to be today. Um, if it's not where you want to be next year or five years from now, well then, you know, practice the law of attraction, visualize where you want to be, being grateful for today, and then let the universe guide your steps. So, um, you know, spirit always talks to me and mostly it's telling me just chill out a little bit, take it easy. It's okay. Sometimes they'll just tell me, you know, problems don't take a vacation, but it's okay to take a vacation from problems and other people's as well. So take a day off, take some time off. Oh, I love that. Because those problems are going to be there. Mm -hmm. So what difference is it to take a vacation for a week or a day? You know, 
and then go back to whatever is that's really horrible because we can't every day of our life problem solve, solve it, look for solutions because every day there are problems. Every day with all this technology, every day there's something not working, the print is not working, this is not working, the internet's not working. You know, there's always something we have to reset with our computers or redo and it feels a little overwhelming at times. So sometimes just a day off, a few hours off, just go for a walk, step away from the problem for a little bit and you might find the solution when you stepped away. Sure. You'll get some awareness or someone will say something to you. So stepping away from problems helps. And again, being in gratitude we were, and grace, grace follows gratitude. Okay. When and and I see, I see grace as like the, um, it, it sort of leads us to gratitude Both. and then we pick it up again because I do believe it's this continuous river. You've given us so many examples of the grace, you know, going to the party at Christmas time and having, you know, another um, Downs person, they're giving you a message from Jesus. You know, it's, it's like you've given us so many incredible examples. That's grace. Grace is when, when the universe, when God, when spirit, however you want to express it, puts in our path exactly what we need to bring our focus back to what's real. And exactly. And I think the message delivered to me through Down syndrome wasn't a coincidence. It was like, Cindy, you have, a good, you have a good mind. Yeah. But how about be a little more like Forrest Gump? Have a good heart, <laughs> soul, and body. And to that mind, you know, yeah. shut off that mind. Stop thinking every minute. You know, let soul come through to you because Down syndrome are all soul and heart. Yes. Okay. That's what they are. And the same thing with Forrest Gump. How much did he accomplish without a great mind, but with a strong heart and soul and body? So, my message was you're getting in your own way with your mind. You That's need right. to kind of shut it off a little bit. You need to let divine guidance come through. You need to just stop because you're making yourself depressed. You're making yourself, you're overthinking, you're overanalyzing and you're not in, enjoying anything because of it. Right. So, you know, sometimes we just need to stop thinking so much. It's just and live a little and enjoy. And that's what gratitude is. If you're you know, thinking all the time, then a simple piece of pie isn't gonna make you so happy. But if you're just enjoying and eating the pie and allowing your body to experience the joy of that pie, that's where it becomes more in gratitude for things. So that's what I try yeah. to do. I shut off my mind once in a while and just enjoy what's there. And when you do, you're open then to those messages that are coming from your higher self, like relax <laughs> and have a boat in front of you right? that's going to remind you for the entire time rather than stressing out. This is grace. Well, your, your stories have been wonderful. Your wisdom, of course, is always just so deep and so pertinent and so important for us to take in and be in grace with. So thank you so much for that, Cindy. And how can people reach you? They can reach me uh, via my website, which is pretty easy to remember the name. It's grantmeahigherlove.com. Or they can reach me via my email, which is my name, my full name, Cindy Sansone Braff, no hyphen, Cindy Sansone Braff, all one word, at gmail.com. Fantastic. And when is your radio program and how can people find it? It's on Blog Talk Radio. It's every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's called the number one Long Island Psychic Medium offers free relationship advice. Um, and I also have a podcast, Souls, Soul Matters with Dr. Gary, which is something new this COVID year. We decided let's do a podcast. Wonderful. So, um, those are things that I love doing. And the blog talk has been on for more than, I think it's about 12 years now since the book 2008. So wow. it's been going on very strong. And so then how do people reach you in terms of the podcast? The podcast is 
always, I always put it on my Facebook page, which is, um, you know, Cindy Sansom Brack, or on my page, which is why good people can't leave bad relationships. I have that page on there so they could see it on that or they could see it on my website, which I always post on my blog site there too. Very good. Well, thank you so much again. Always such a pleasure, pure joy and pure grace. My heart is filled with gratitude as I'm sure everyone is who is you know, tuning into this. And um, I just wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart. And thank you for having me and reminding me that Thanksgiving means be in gratitude. That's right. So for anyone, um, please leave your comments or questions. We're happy to have them. It actually thrills us to tell you the truth. And of course, um, if you are uh, wanting to reach out to me directly, you can do so through my website, which is heartshiftcoach.com. And by the way, I have a new freebie there. It's a little <laughs> ebook called Love is in the Air. So take advantage of it. And so much love to all of you. Happy Thanksgiving. And um, until next time, which will be tomorrow. Bye-bye now.